Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be adding on to our Monitor Lizard Taming Guide. I know I may have slacked just a little bit since part one to part two now, uh, but <laughs> I think it's been like a year or something at this point. Although old Dakota has slipped a little bit, I am going to start taking this one a little bit more seriously and diving into a lot more of this series. I'm not too sure how many parts there are going to be, but I really want to get more into the monitor taming stuff and lizard psychology, making videos such as that, so this will definitely be more of a regular part of the channel going forward. Just why if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to go down there, hit that subscribe button and the little bell thing, I guess I'll add that in there too. Uh, to make sure that you get up-to-date updates on everything that's going on within this monitor lizard taming guide. So we're going to be going over taming monitors by using them in a neutral ground setting. So we're not going to be trying to tame the monitors actually inside their enclosure, putting them into a neutral area. Uh, for this instance, I decided to use a 56 quart tub with some warm water in it. And at this point, you can really actually see the results. I believe the clip's like 11 minutes of me doing the little taming thing that we'll be talking about a little later. And you can actually see from the first time getting them out of the enclosure into this little water bucket thing. And and then actually at the very end, how much calmer they are and how much more susceptible they are to handling. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and roll that clip right now and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, Okie dokie folks, this is pretty much how I'm gonna do things. Uh, so this is kind of like, I guess you can compare this to the bathtub method. Uh, however, I actually like having them a little bit close to the enclosure so when you're done with this method, you can just, as soon as they calm down, we'll explain it a little bit later, all you have to do is just plop them back in and they're good to go. Uh, so pretty much what you're gonna want is some sort of bin. I like mine with a little bit of a higher wall so they can't run up and escape. So right now I'm using, I believe this is a 56 quart bin. And what we did is we filled it with just a little bit of warm water, just enough where they can kind of splash around in it, but not fully enough where they constantly have to be uh, either swimming or submerged in the water. They can still stand up and get their head out. So a shallow amount of water. As far as the water temperature, you don't want it cold. Cold is really just gonna cause the animal to slow down, which doesn't make it tame. It just means it's cold. Uh, so personally, I actually use mine a little bit on the hotter end because while I'm talking and doing this, the water temperature is going to dissipate, it's going to get cooler. While you're doing this and doing this problem, the water is going to get colder and colder as time goes on. So if you're using just like lukewarm water, I find it to get colder by the time you're finished with this taming process. So I like putting mine a little bit on the hotter end. By the time we get the animals in, it'll just be warm, uh, somewhere around that high 78 degrees. And then probably when we're done, we'll be around the 72 degree area, which might even be a little bit cold for them. But yeah, that's what we're going to do. So let's get the monitors out and I'll show you guys just really what I'm going to do in this process. All right, so as you can see, these are not tamed monitors in any way, shape, or form. They are quite the opposite, and I just want to show a lot of these taming guides I've seen, people are already have tamed monitors, and they show what they do. I want to show this process that I'm doing with monitors that are obviously uh, not very tamed, so we're just going to plop them in. It's going to calm down a little bit. They've gotten a lot better, actually, since I've started doing this. It's, I've been about a week in the process. All right, monitor number two, not tame as you can. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go, uh, one more. And monitor number three. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, so we'll just give these guys a couple seconds to calm down and really just kind of explore their new surrounding. Uh, so the big, oh man, these guys caught my knee pretty good. Sharp nails, Quince monitors, sharp nails. So really what we're gonna do is we're putting these animals in a neutral area. While these animals are in here, they're gonna be a little bit more territorial, a little bit more flighty. Uh, we wanna, I got some poop on me too, that is lovely. Uh, well, we wanna take these animals out of their in habitat and put them in a neutral area where they feel like as soon as they get a little bit used to it, uh, this is going to help the process a lot better because you're not invading their actual home, you're just in a neutral area. I'm just going to keep saying neutral area. <laughs> These guys have a little bit calmed down a little bit and understand like they're uh, just in some splashy water. I find water with uh, monitor lizards, especially some of the more tropical species, so Asian water monitors, uh, quince monitors, mangrove monitors, anything like that that is somewhat semi-aquatic as well, uh, works a lot better. They like the water, they enjoy the water. Uh, so this is pretty much how we're going to do this. Step one is going to be a little bit it looks like it's not going to work, but as we get into like the third time of trying this, you're actually going to see results in person. So what I like to do is just pick one up. Uh, what you want to do is open palm. You don't want to try to just restrain and grab the animal. And then what we're going to do is just let them run around. So you see we're already getting ton flicks was a good sign. Like I said, I've been doing this method for a couple of weeks, so they're, they're a little bit better than what they used to be. And what we do here is just wait for them to slow down. You don't want them being all jumpy and skippy. You really want to get a lot of those long tongue flicks, making sure they're taking in the information. There we go. And then 
plop them back in. So this is what you want to do. This is uh, gaining threads of trust, if you will. I take a lot of this from uh, Kevin McCurley, but as I explain it, it sounds a lot less intelligent as him. Uh, pretty much what you want to do is uh, make sure the monitor understands that you are not a threat to them. That's why we're open palming. We're not restraining or grabbing the animal in any way. And as you see, if the animal is calm and nice to walk off, he's able to leave my uh, presence with these big hands, these big scary hands. Uh, however, what you don't want to do in this method is going to be as the animal's freaking out, just splash him back in. That's going to reinforce the ideology that if that animal tries to be frantic and escape, he's able to escape. You want to make sure that when you release the animal back into this neutral surrounding, that the animal is in a calm spirit, and that will reinforce that ideology that if I'm calm and collective about myself, they won't hurt me and they'll just let me go. So like I said, we're just gonna have him run around. This one is a little bit more feisty. We just wanna wait. Again, we want those tongue flicks. We don't want him just freaking out. You can see he's puffing out his throat. He's a little bit unsure, but now we're starting to get some tongue flicks. And we just wanna wait until he stops this franticness. As soon as he slows down, put him right back in and then we'll do it all over again. So at these taming sessions, you really only want them to go. This is what we want exactly. We want him to stay calm and then Plop them back in nice and slow. That reinforces that ideology that if I'm calm and collective about myself, they're gonna let me go. That is awesome, that's what we wanna see. Now let's try it with the third one. This of the trio, this one was, <laughs> I feel like when they're babies, they're easier to tame, like as long as you're getting like human interaction. Of course, uh, quince monitors are mostly 90% are field collected. Uh, so as they get older, they, they're in the wild a little bit longer. So I feel like they're gonna be a little bit more tricky. Whereas like my youngest one has probably the best out of the trio because it's been in, in captivity the longest out of all of them. So like I said, this guy's gonna be a little bit more tricky. Um, same process, we don't do anything different. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. He's gonna, he's a little bit larger, so his claws are gonna dig into my skin a little bit more. It's all well and good. You can already see he's slowing down a little bit. We just wanna get that complete stop. And there we go. And then, plop him right back in. It's that easy, folks. Okay, so I, I try to do this three times over. I each take individual one, do this, and then plop him back in. So let's get the baby again. There we go. And then, plops right back in. Wow! <laughs> All right, let's grab uh, another one. Man, I absolutely love my quince monitors. I actually want more quince monitors in the future. Uh, like I said, we've been growing out some trios, working with some long-term breeding projects. Of course, this is gonna be like a five-year endeavor. Uh, but we probably, at this point, I'm gonna wait for them to get a little bit older. We'll try to sex them. I got, I know some people that are a little bit better at sexing um, with some of these like Indicus complex monitors than I am. And at that point, what we'll do is, there we go. And at that point, if we have multiple males, then we'll have to grab another trio. If we got multiple females, I already have a male that I've been growing out for a couple of years. Uh, things like that. As you, ooh, ooh, yeah, this older one, man. This older one is not very complicated with, uh, or, um, he just doesn't do well with the training process. He's like more on the Fritz side and frantic, whereas the other ones, I don't know if you noticed, it took a lot faster for them to uh, get that stopping ground and for them to just relax, where this one is still kind of like, you can see he's, kind of freaking out a little bit. Another great way to thing to do if your monitor lizard is getting too frantic, if you take note of my um, older high yellow quince monitor, I did not start training with him till he was way too old and it has been a real pain, especially with these claws. As they get older, their claws get very big, but one awesome thing you can do is, number one, with these arboreal species, you can lift them up. And you guys can't see it on camera, but let's see if we can, but he stops, so if you put them up, they enjoy being on the high ground. So this animal has calmed down a lot. I, I, I'm sorry about the camera. I'm just a one man show, no cameraman. And you can see it's a lot more calm. And when it's calm, oh, 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 that's what we don't want. Don't want to put the animal back when it's frantic. So let's try putting him up again. Wait till we get that stop. And we got the stop. And then nice and easy. You don't want any splashing, any sprinting. She really becomes when the animal is sprinting and when he's like freaking out. Uh, so basically, uh, monitor lizards have two modes that I've seen. Well, I have a couple of modes. Feeding mode, thinking mode, and then frantic mode, that uh, fight or flight response. Uh, mostly with quince monitors, you're gonna get a lot more of a flight response than a fight response. I've never been bitten by any of my quinces. They really have like not an aggressive bone in their body. They're more of the skittish animal. And what's happening is when they are in that mode and you are just letting them go through that mode, they're getting it in their head like that's the way to get out of this situation. When what we wanna do as the keeper 
paper is initialized that to get out of this situation, all you have to do is be calm and collective. Flying response, of course, we are a much larger animal than these tiny little babies. And you can already see from just the first time taking them out of the tent, how freaked out they are, how much better they are now. This guy's getting a lot of tongue flicks. This is exactly what you want. You see no, that you don't see that puffed out throat. You're seeing tongue flicks, all happy and good. Now he is being a little bit climbing, but modern lizards are a little bit climbing, man. This is no problem. Even with this, I'm just gonna put him back because that's exactly what we want out of our monitor lizards. That is exactly what you wanna see. Uh, let's see if we can get with the other one. Walk on the walls and stuff. I like to just kinda use my hand like they're climbing up. Kinda using your hand almost as some sort of perch rather than it being something scary. Uh, again, you can see this guy is way better than what he was beforehand in that just getting out of the tent, how frantic and just scared they were. But at this point, just nice calms. We're getting those tongue flicks as well. A little bit less, you'll notice that this process process works less and less as the animal uh, ages. I feel like with some of the older species, it's just, or the older animal, it's going to be a little bit more of a long run into taming them out, whereas the babies just seem to take it almost instantly. There we go, buddy. Beautiful. We got those tongue flicks, and then all we do... Awesome. Awesome. That's exactly what we wanted to see. Uh, one more time with the older male. With the older male. I don't know if he's a male or not. I don't know why I call him a male. So this is a bit of a conundrum. While you notice that he is standing still, uh, this is actually a fear response. You see, he's frozen in fear. He's not tongue flicking. Now, what I want to see from a common collective animal is the fact that they are getting those long tongue flex and they're still trying to run around. We don't want them completely stationary like this because this animal is just scared out of his mind. He's just staying there waiting for me to go away. And while that's a little bit better in the keeper's perspective than him running away, it's still not good. What we want to do with these animals is to create a trust relationship with them and at least some sort of a bond. Here we go. We're getting some movement at least. You can see he's very unsure of himself, not having a good time. Let me get that water drop it for you, bud. See if you can see um, over here. His breathing is increasing. This is not what we want to see out of our monitor lizards. This animal's actually, you can see now, open gaping. Uh, he's kind of had enough of this. And when it comes to this situation, um, I don't think you should continue training with him because this animal is now just too stressed out and he's going into that upper level of his, uh, what he's able to do, his mechanism. So we're getting that open gaping, that fear response. He's trying out different strategies, but those strategies aren't that positive reinforcement. It's just negative reinforcements. So now he's doing things like, I'm going to gape my mouth to try to get you to go away. I'm going to huff and puff. I'm gonna play dead uh, things of that nature is anything he's trying to do to get us to go away But what we're gonna do is stand firm with this We're not gonna want to just be like, okay, well, he's not having a good time Let's just put him back up. We still want to get that last positive Interaction with the animal so when the animal gives us those tongue flicks he starts climbing around a little bit We're just gonna put him right back in the enclosure There you have it guys, just a quick tidbit on the methods I'm using to actually tame out my quince monitors. Uh, next time in this series, we'll actually be going into something completely different. We'll be talking about how, at least in my personal opinion, I believe taming monitor lizards, it can actually be done in multiple ways depending on the individual species. For instance, personally, the techniques I'm using to tame down my quince monitors, I wouldn't necessarily use to tame down my Accus or my Argus monitors. I think there's a clear difference in routes you can take that would make it a little bit easier and make taming down a little bit faster, again, at least in my personal experience. Experience. Other than that, guys, that is going to wrap up the video today. As always, if you want to check me out on some other stuff, of course, I'm always on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. If you want to check out some of the babies I have for sale or anything like that, you can check me out on those two platforms up there. Then, of course, as always, we have patreon.com slash dbcbexotics. You get up-to-date updates on everything that's going on within my breeding business. This includes things such as my toke geckos, ball pythons, new Caledonian stuff, monitor lizards, tegus, and everything of that sort. There's even tips some in the entire tiers where you can actually get discounts on the babies that produce themselves. All well and good starts as low as $1 month. If you want to check it out, you can check it out at the link in the description below. Other than that, guys, I'll see you next time. But until then, goodbye.